Leave It to Beaver. Starring Barbara Billingsley. Hugh Beaumont. Tony Dow. And Jerry Mathers as the beaver. Hey, beaver, wait up! Hi, Gilbert. Hi. What do you got in the box? Look! Gee, golf balls. Where'd you get them? I found them. Where? Over by the driving range. Guys are always hitting them over that big wire fence. You sure found a lot of them. Yeah. I would have found more, but a guy came and chased me away while I was finding him. Let's go over to your house and smack him around. With what? With your father's golf clubs. Gee, Gilbert, I don't think he'd let us use them. Let us? You're not going to be dumb enough to ask him, are you? You mean sneak him out when he's not home? Sure, that's what I mean. Let's go. But, gee, Gilbert, if we do that, we'll liable to get in trouble. Beaver, everything that's fun can get you in trouble. Haven't you learned that yet? and early for a Saturday afternoon. I can tell by the kiss you were in the high 90s. In them and beyond them. I shot a nice bowling score. Oh, that bad, huh? Yeah, it was a disaster. Look what I did to my best driver. Oh, can you have it fixed? No, nah, it wouldn't be worth it. Well, Sam Snead always said there'd be days like this. I have a wonderful idea to take your mind off of all of this. Oh, good. You can take me marketing. Oh, well, all right, but you have to take the cart through the check stand. I can't bear watching that cash register go wild. I'll get my list. All right. Gee, Beaver, at our house, we keep all our drawers locked. How come? On account of my sister. Who'd want to steal her? Listen, Beaver, if you're a girl and you don't think somebody wants to steal you, you might as well be dead. If I was a girl, I'd want to be dead anyways. <laughs> hey, Beaver, there's your father's golf clubs. Think anybody's home? I don't know. Maybe they're in the kitchen or upstairs. At my house, I always yell, Hey, Mom! Hey, Dad! And if they shout down, Shut up! Then I know they're home. Yeah, I guess I could try that. Hey, Mom! Hey, Dad! Hey, Wally! <laughs> See? Nobody's home. Now, let's get those golf clubs. Yeah, well, I guess it wouldn't hurt just to borrow one for a few minutes. Here's a neat-looking one. That's a driver. That's the one you use to hit the ball in the sand when you start off. <laughs> I'm first, because it was my idea. OK. But remember, watch my dad's club. I know, I know. We'll hit it into those bushes over there. OK. Hey, Gilbert, you're holding it like a baseball bat. That's no good. It's good enough for Mickey Mantle. He doesn't play golf. He just shaves and plays baseball. Here, let me show you. Beaver, you look like you're a girl doing the hula hula. It's all right as long as you're playing golf. <laughs> and there it goes! Uh oh, Gilbert, the ball's still there. <laughs> then what went into the bushes? Uh -oh. It was the top of the club. That's what you get for being a wise guy. Come on, Gilbert. We better find the top. Not me. I'm going home. How come? 
Beaver, I'm your best friend. I don't want to be around when your father's killing you. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Boy, Wally, you dirty little sneak spying on me. Now, yeah, sneak. What are you up to, you little creep? Well, nothing. A guy can stand in his own hall in his own house if he wants to, can he? Oh, boy, Beaver. Busted Dad's golf club. Well, it was nice knowing you. Gee, Wally, I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, what were you doing, hammering nails with it? Uh uh Gilbert brought over some golf balls, and we were smacking them around in the backyard. And then all of a sudden, it just busted. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You better tell Dad right away. But he won't be playing golf till way next Saturday. I want to pick the best time. <laughs> Look, Beaver, when you do something this bad, there is no best time. Well, I figured I could tell him maybe tomorrow, right after church. He yells less on Sunday than any other day in the week. I wouldn't count on that. They might have a sermon about being strict with kids or something. But he Look, won't... Beaver, take my advice. The sooner you tell him and get your punishment over with, the better off you're going to be. You know, Wally, you're going to talk just like Dad. I am not. I've just had more experience being a kid than you have. Dad's going to find out anyway, so the sooner you tell him, the better it'll be. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Oh, hello, Beaver. I'll set the table for you, Dad. Well, thanks very much. Well, that's very sweet of you, Beaver. That's OK, Mom. I don't mind being sweet. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, I uh, was just wondering what he's done wrong. <laughs> oh, Ward, can't you just give him credit for being thoughtful? Yeah, but his hair was combed, June. No, he's using extreme measures. He's growing up. Yeah, but his hands were washed, too. I saw knuckles I haven't seen for a week. <laughs> oh, sir. Something's cooking. Ward, I just don't know how you can be so positive. Well, it's very simple. The whole thing's an inherited trait, the same system I used to use. <laughs> Want me to put the glasses on, too? Yes, Beaver, thank you. Well, that's OK. And unless I'm very much mistaken, he'll eat everything on his plate tonight. Well, I'll believe that when I see it. Real good, Mom. Thank you, Beaver. Dad, do you have a minute? Oh, yes, Beaver. I uh, think I can work you in. I mean, in private. Um, you stay here. I'm going out in the kitchen. Wally, you can help me. Okay, Mom. I want to take my jacket off first. I don't want to get it slopped up. I've got a date. <laughs> well, Beaver? Dad, you've noticed that sometimes things happen that aren't supposed to happen, but they happen anyways? Well, Beaver, I don't know quite what... Quite... Wally, that's my shirt, isn't it? Oh, um... Well, yeah, Dad, I, uh... I guess it is. I guess it must have got put in my drawer by mistake, and, uh, and I sort of put it on. Well, you can sort of go back upstairs and take it off. That happens to be a very expensive shirt. All you have to do is go out and play football in it, and I won't have a shirt left. Gee, Dad, I wouldn't play football in it. The season's over. <laughs> Look, Wally, do I go into your room and borrow your shirts and ties and socks? No, sir. Do you know why I don't? Because they don't fit you. <laughs> no, Wally. Because I happen to have respect for other people's possessions. Now, I don't place many restrictions on you boys. But there's one thing I do ask, and that is that you leave my things alone. Well, yes, sir. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll go up and change it right away. Now, Beaver. Uh, <laughs> Now, Beaver, uh, what was it you wanted to say? About what, Dad? Well, you said you wanted to talk to me for a minute. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I did. 
What was the question you wanted to ask in private? Oh, well, do you think the St. Louis Cardinals will have a better baseball team this year than they did last year? <laughs> well, I really haven't given it much thought. Well, that's okay. I don't like baseball much anyways. <laughs> Beaver, you still should have told him. How could I have to way he balled you up for wearing his shirt? And how come you had to pick a time when I was in trouble to wear one of his shirts? <laughs> Look, Beaver, if I had to wait all the time until you weren't in some kind of trouble, I'd be waiting the rest of my life. <laughs> Gee, I was all set to tell Dad, and now I don't know if I can ever tell him. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to be around here next Saturday when Dad takes his golf clubs out. I guess he's gonna be real mad. Mad? There's gonna be more yelling and screaming around here than when you were a little kid and you tried to put your marbles in the garbage disposal. Maybe between now and Saturday, I could buy Dad a new golf club. Now, where are you gonna get the money? It costs around 12 bucks. No fooling? Boy, when you grew up, your toys should cost a lot of money, don't they? How much money have you got? About $3. Well, maybe he could buy it on some kind of an installment plan. What's that? Well, that's a system they got so the people who can't afford stuff can buy it anyway. Gee, that's pretty neat. Does it really work? Well, sure it does. How do you think Dad bought this house? He put up a down payment, and then he pays the guy who owns the house something every month. You mean we're living in somebody else's house? Well, yeah, sort of. Well, gee, if they got mad at us or something, they could come over here and throw us out. Nah, they can't just come over and throw us out. This is a democracy. They've got to pay a high-priced lawyer to come around and throw us out. Gee, I never knew lawyers had so much fun. Yeah, Beeb, that sounds like a neat idea. But do you think it works for kids? I don't know. Let's ask. Well, hello, boys. Can I help you? Yes, Mr. Briggs. I'm Theodore Cleaver, and you know me on account of my father, Mr. Cleaver, is all the time coming in here and buying expensive stuff. Oh, yes, Theodore. Well, what can we do for you today? A baseball? No, sir. I was wondering, if a guy was going to buy something on time payments, how much would he have to start with? <laughs> time payments, eh? Well, the first payment is usually 30%. 30% of what the guy's got? No, 30% of the purchase price. Oh, excuse me a minute, boys. Gee, Gilbert, do you think I got enough money? Well, it's like those problems in school. You gotta figure out $3 is 30% of what? Gee, Gilbert, if I can't do them there, I can't do them here. <laughs> you know something, Beaver? I think a kid like you is better off paying cash. <laughs> I don't have the cash. Well, now, Theodore, what is it you want to buy on the installment plan? A golf club, a speed flash driver. A golf club? Oh, it's not for me, it's for my father. Oh, you, uh, want to surprise him with a new golf club? Yes, sir. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna surprise him. It's sort of a secret surprise. <laughs> well, your father bought a set of clubs not long ago. Are you sure he could use a new driver? Oh, yes, sir. He's positive of that. Well, uh, this driver costs about $13. I'd have to have at least $5 down. Well... Do you think you could do it for at least $3 down? Well, I guess I could for you. Uh, how long do you want to pay it off? Would five years be OK? Five years? Yes, sir. I think I could pay a quarter a week, and I guess that would come out to about five years. Yeah. Well, it won't take quite that long. Uh, you give me your $3 now and come in every week and pay the quarter. Thank you. Would you like me to gift wrap the club for you? I don't think he wants to surprise his father that much, sir. Hey, that looks almost as good as new. What did you do, glue it back together? No, this is a new one. I'm trying to crumb it up so it'll look like the old one. I didn't know you were smart enough to be that sneaky. I'm not being sneaky. I'm doing it to help Dad. Well, how's it helping him? Well, I don't want him to come home from work tired and everything and have to blow his top at me. Well, he'll be home any minute. You better get it in the golf bag in a hurry. Yeah, I know. 
But Mom's in the living room, and his golf bag's in the hall closet. How can I get it in there without her seeing me? Search me. I was just thinking, Wally. Maybe you could get her in the kitchen, and I could sneak in the front door at the golf club. What are you trying to do, make me a sneak, too? Well, sure. You're my brother, aren't you? <laughs> OK. I might need you for something sometime. I'll do it. OK. Gee, thanks a lot, Wally. Come in the kitchen. Wally, what is it? What's wrong? Nothing. I, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I'm home. Wally, I was sewing in the living room. Well, you frightened me shouting like that. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom, but you always told me to let you know when I come home, and, and I didn't want to get yelled at for not yelling. <laughs> What was that? Hmm? Oh, I didn't hear anything. It sounded like the front door. Well, it, um, it sounded more like a car door to me. How could it sound like a car door if you didn't hear anything? Oh, well, um, I didn't mean that. I just meant I didn't hear the front door slam. Could I have some milk, Mom? I didn't hear anything that time either, Mom. Wally, why are you being so evasive? Now, you heard that as well as I did. Heard what, Mom? Oh, Wally. Fever, it's you. Yeah, Mom, it's me. Why are you walking like that? Oh, well, uh, I was just pretending I was a one-legged pirate, and I'm going upstairs to walk the plank. <laughs> It was Beaver out here all the time. Gee, no fooling, Mom. Boy, you know, I could have sworn that was a car door I heard. <laughs> Sam, I thought you always carried speed flash clubs. Well, I, I uh, do, Ward. I, I just happen to be out of drivers. I saw one right here in this rack just a few days ago. Well, there's been a kind of a run on drivers. <laughs> Always happens this time of year. Oh. Yeah, well, uh, thanks anyway. Thought you were going to stop by and get a new golf club. Sam Briggs said he didn't have any. We haven't done anything to offend him, have we? Of course not. It's almost as though he didn't want to do business with me. Oh, honey, you must be imagining things. Yeah. Well, maybe I can find some way to get the old one repaired. Yes, dear? Uh, last Saturday, when I came home from playing golf, you saw me wiggle this head, didn't you? Yes, Ward. Why? Oh, nothing. Uh, you're positive you saw it wiggle? Yes, Ward. I know a wiggle when I see one. If you just tell me what it's all about. Look. Oh, that's strange. That's my driver, too. Golf club couldn't heal itself. Without a little help. 
Wally, Beaver. Yeah, Dad? Wally, come down here and bring Beaver with you. You think the boys had something to do with this? Well, I don't know, but it's always a good place to start. <laughs> Yes, Dad? You want something, Dad? Boys, your mother and I are a little puzzled by something that happened. Last week, your father broke one of his golf clubs. And the strange thing is, when I took it out of the bag just now to see about getting it fixed, it wasn't broken anymore. Now, how do you account for that? Well, uh, gee, Dad, um... Uh, maybe you got a good fairy. <laughs> uh, no, Beaver, I don't think that's the explanation. But I do think one of you boys knows something about this. I guess I know something more about it than Wally does. Well, then, uh, come on in the den. Tell me all about it. Wally, did this have anything to do with the door slamming before? <laughs> Gee, Mom, what would make you think that? <laughs> Come on, Wally. And then I put the new club in the bag, and I took the old one out, on account I didn't know it was supposed to be broken. Beaver, when you thought you'd broken the club, why didn't you come to me and tell me right away? Oh, well, I was going to, Dad. But then you started bawling out Wally for wearing one of your shirts. And if you got that mad about a shirt, I didn't want to see what was going to happen about a golf club. Naturally, I would have been upset. Boy, Dad, I sure got a bad break not knowing it was broken all the time. Well, Beaver, when you do things like this, you're going to be surprised at how many bad breaks you get. You're old enough to realize, son, that when you do something wrong, we usually find out about it. You know, you're right, Dad. I haven't gotten away with anything really good enough for a couple of years. <laughs> Don't you think the answer, then, is just not to get into things like this in the first place? Sure, Dad. But most of the time, it only seems like a bad idea when you get caught. Well, the next time, Beaver, you just look ahead a little bit and realize that the chances are you are going to get caught. Then maybe you won't do it. Yes, sir. Dad, am I still going to have to keep paying for the golf club? No, Beaver, I'll take care of that, and I'll give you your three dollars back. But the next time Gilbert comes over here with a box full of golf balls, what are you going to do? Punch him in the nose. <laughs> I don't think you need to be quite that drastic. Uh, just don't listen to him. Did you get it straightened out? Uh-huh. Beaver thought he broke the club, and he went to a lot of trouble to replace it. Warden, when you were Beaver's age, if you'd broken something of your father's, would you have tried to hide it from him? Yeah. I think, like Beaver, I'd have gone to most any lengths to avoid a fuss. <laughs> well, when he found out about it, would he have sat down and let you explain it to him? Well, no. My father had a very practical shortcut to child psychology. A razor strap. <laughs> sure cut down on the conversation around our house. Beaver, what are you doing? I'm thinking. Now, what do you want to go and do that for? It's not even a school night. I was thinking maybe I should stop getting in trouble. Yeah, you better watch it, Beaver. You're going to get it one of these days. What do you mean, get it? Well, you're liable to grow up and have a kid that does the same kind of goofy stuff that you do. Yeah, I never thought of that. But do you know it'd be worse, Wally? What's that? If a guy was Eddie Haskell and had a kid that acted just like he acts. Well, I don't think there's much chance of that, Beef. A guy like Eddie Haskell only comes along once in a couple hundred years. 